Hey, I can't play this, uh, but I tried. Um, this is a this is a, a thing I derived from uh, Joe Bonamassa's playing, uh, and he's uh, an incredible blues player. But he's, he's also very, you know, his technical skills are just up there, and he really uh, pushed the boundaries for me right now because from studying him, I just found out that you know my two note per string pentatonic stuff isn't as I'm not as good as that as I want to be. So he kind of, you know, uh, just set the bar a little bit higher than, than, uh, than I expected to. So how, do, how does Joe play his, his fast stuff? And, and the answer is so simple. He just masters the two note per string shape, you know, at a level that most people don't. So, so let's look into what he's actually doing. And um, one of the key things that he's very good at is something just that blows my mind because it's the worst thing you can possibly think of. You know, when I started playing uh, uh, faster stuff, I, you know, I was really into the three note per string shape, you know, of everything, just trying to play three notes on, you know, on each string because then we don't have as many string shifts, right? And I can play that faster if I, uh, if I diminish those. So, and, and faster licks with two note per string uh, pentatonic shapes were just a, a challenge. But Joe didn't think that. He just went for it, apparently, because he just, he, he's up there, right? So let's look at it. Um, here's a simple thing he does that's really effective and also just, pff, you know, blows my mind. Why would you stop practicing this? You know, uh, we're in the key of E, so we have our first position E blue scale shape up here. In the 12th fret, yeah, right? So start up there and then play six notes down in this scale, but only the pentatonic notes. Don't, you know, skip the blue note. And then play each note. You play six notes down, three strings, but on each string, uh, you only pick the first note and then pull off down to the next. So you have 15th fret, pull off down to 12th, 15th fret on the B string as well, and then pull off down to 12th. And you do the same thing from the 14th to the 12th on the G string. All right? Pretty simple, right? What's hard about that? Well, try speeding it up, right? And that's also a thing he does. He stays in the same position. Right? And then he skips the B string and just jumps up to the first note again. And that's a very cool exercise that you can just start doing, right? Uh, nobody said this would be easy. So just six notes down, right? And then what blows my mind is he just goes for the next position. So he goes, right? <laughs> That's crazy because you have to jump position and you have to skip a string at the same time. Come on, right? But let's pretend that this is not hard because that's apparently what he did since he just went ahead and practiced this. So. That's the first thing, right? When we go to the next position, and uh, that will be uh, in the 12th to 10th on both the E and the B string. Same technique, pick the first note in the 12th, pull off down to 10th, and you do the same thing on the B string, right? And the same thing almost on the G string where you have the 12th and uh, the 9th fret. And how do you pick this? Well, you can just do upstrokes or downstrokes, right? Because you can really, because you have that pull off in between, you don't have to do alternate picking. Uh, in fact, it's easier to just use upstrokes. Right? Um, so now you have your next exercise. You go back and forth between these two positions. Right? So skip a string, and you know, you get to the ninth fret on the G string, you have to jump all the way up to the 15th fret. And please note that he isn't good at this because of some special talent. Please drop that notion. It has nothing to do with it. He just went for it and started practicing this like a maniac, like everybody else who reaches that level of playing, right? So you should do the same. Just cut the stories about, oh, this is too hard for me, little me, you know? <laughs> little ordinary me with the most advanced nervous system and the most magical, most advanced uh, precision tool on the planet, uh, right at the end of your arm. Little you, right? Stop the stories, just do it, right? 
And if you need to practice this with the metronomes, you have to keep hitting the wrong note because I have to shift position and skip a string. So this is a humbling exercise, you know. And he's a blues player. Come on, Joe. You're usually not capable of doing these things. <laughs> Use your metronome in the beginning, and then go da 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 da. Then get the timing right. Then go to your TV set, sit down, TV set. Do we even call those flat screen that? And um and watch some some uh, some TV as you just continue doing this over and over again. Get every note right. Don't rush it. Just keep, you know, making this the most comfortable thing in the world to do. <laughs> Skipping a string and a position. And please note that I'm using my first and, th and third finger. You can use the fourth as well. But in blues, when you play the pentatonic scale, sometimes you just want to use the third because... Because, you know, it doesn't work with the fourth when you have to go from position to position. And the third finger is stronger than the fourth. But... I, I, I'm going to show you a, a little run I created from this idea of just playing sixes, right? Because that it's kind of difficult going back and forth between positions like he does, right? So let's not skip a string. Let's see if we can avoid that and then do a cool run anyway, right? Uh, so let's, and we can actually do a, a cool a descending run down the fr fretboard here by going, right? And we'll learn the shapes as we go along. It's a really good uh, exercise for connecting the pentatonic shapes, right? It's what I played in the beginning there. And I'm trying. I have to speed that up 25 to 50% to reach his level. It's not a competition, Klaus. I don't care. It sounds really cool when he's playing it that fast. It totally changes the sound of it, right? Because, right? And those tune up a string and the whole hammer on some pull offs thing, or just the pull offs, it just gives it a cool, cool sound that I just love. So I'm going to practice this. I don't know about you, but I'm going to take this all the way uh, by just, you know, TV practice. Uh, you know the strategy. So let's look into the run here that I created. And I'm not saying that he necessarily does this. It just creates the same sound. And it kind of lowers the, the, the challenge just a little bit so we mortals can follow along. So we're going to do the same thing first. The six notes, right? 15, 12, 15, 12, and then 14, 12, like we did in the beginning. Then I'm going to go to the next position down here. But I'm not going to jump up to the high E string. I'm just going to go for the the B string and play the six note shape I get there. And that will be the 12th and the 10th on the B string. It will be the 12th and the 9th on the G string and then 12th and 9th on the D string. So I go, right? And of course, in the upcoming course here, we're going to go close up for these things so you can really focus on it without having to, uh, right? Uh, uh, see how elegantly I just slipped in the fact that I'm launching a course here in <laughs> a little while. Uh, right? So now we got these two. And please use your first and, and third finger for the whole thing. So you have to twist your arm like that. <laughs> now that's a challenge. Okay, the next position is... Uh, the ninth and the seventh fret on the G string. Pick the first note, pull off down to the seventh fret. Do the same thing on the G string. So ninth and seventh. And then on the A string, we have the tenth and we have the seventh. Right? Right? Next position. Pretty simple because it's just the seventh and the fifth fret on both the D, the A, and the E string. And then you can end on the G there and pull off down to E. You have the root note. So the whole thing, and please go download the tabs and this video, and uh, watch it a couple of times, um, and you can study the tabs, bring them with you. But really, the tabs are great, because you have kind of a thing you can re you know, rely on to remind you of what it was. But don't, uh, you know, don't leave this session without learning this so, so well that you can remember it tomorrow. That's, you know... Why would, you, why would you go on to something else and stop watching this video if you intend to do that, <laughs> right? Just freaking practice this until you know it and can bring it with you. So whenever you want to practice, you've got it right here. 
instead of having to refer, let me see, and then you have to read it again, then you get bored, then you leave it and go to something else, right? Just focus on it enough to, to integrate it into your body and fingers and mind so you can remember it. Next level, practice it so much that you can play it perfectly at a low level of tempo without thinking too much about it, right? Make it automatic at a lower level of tempo, right? Play it, you know, a hundred times over. Right? Once you have that level down, go to the TV, practice, sit down, get your butt in the couch, sit there for three hours, do this perfectly. For three hours, right? That's how to build this skill. And if you do that every day, three hours every day, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, three months, I promise you, you'll get to the highest level. Just That's just how it is, right? And at the end of each practice session, you can just test to see how fast you've become, right? Uh, but uh, blues rock is not about playing fast. No, but then, you know, amp up the speed with which you're able to play it so you can play it at a slower level of tempo with more certainty, with more, you know, when you play. So it's easier for you. That's what mastery is all about, right? Keep making mistakes. Right? That's it. I'm gonna get this down, I promise you. Uh, it's a totally different challenge than the three number string, right? <laughs> Still need some. He's got a. So, so we're gonna work on that, uh, and then I'll see you in the next lesson tomorrow, where we're going to pick into another cool thing he does. And as I said in the middle of this little session here, that I'm, I have an upcoming course where we're going to do this a lot. We're going to take a lick and see what can we learn from this? What can we do with this, right? Uh, how can we use this in our own playing without necessarily sounding like the, the guys we're studying? So it call, it's called the Blues Rock Champion because it's all about uh, the Blues Rock players, the top players there, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, like uh, Joe uh, Bonamassa, like, you know, uh, Gary Moore, people like that who's really, wham, you know. So we're going to study that style by taking uh, each individual and really taking the best lessons we can and integrate them into our own playing. But for now, go download this video and the tabs and start practicing right now and make sure you can't forget this little run here and then just start you know, following the process with the metronome and the three stages we talked about and then get it down. Everyone can do it and so can you, little ordinary you. <laughs> right, everyone can do it.